Hi everyone, welcome back to Live in Italy Magazine's YouTube channel. If you ever thought about one, getting married in Italy, two, living in Italy and buying a house, you won't want to miss today's interview. I am very pleased to welcome back Marissa Raul and her husband, David, who our travel editor, Christine, interviewed a while back. You may have read that article. But today, we are welcoming you both back as recently married, recently living in Italy, and having bought a home. And I'm sure you have seen her their channel, which is called Tales of Tuscany. So anything that you would like to know about possibly buying and moving to Italy and their lives together, uh, you will you will find out today. My name is Lisa Morales, and I am the editor of Live in Italy magazine, a travel and lifestyle publication dedicated to all things Italy. Welcome, Marissa and David. Thank you so Thank much, you. Lisa. It's lovely Thanks, to be Lisa. here. That's wonderful. So I'm sure anybody who is following you on social media or has checked out your YouTube channel know where you're both from. But just for the sake of starting this interview, I would love to know individually where you're from. So, um, well, I was born in Sydney, Australia, but of an Italian father and an English mother. So from birth, I basically had Italian citizenship as well as Australian. Excellent. And myself, I was actually born in England. Uh, and then I emigrated to Australia in my 20s. So I've been there for 30 years or so. Ah, very good. And I'm guessing that you are still at the time living between Australia and Italy. Is Australia still your permanent home? Well, it, it kind of is, yes. yes. Still for now, just because yeah. we're still transitioning. Yes, mm. if that's the word. We're definitely <laughs> transitioning um, mm. as quickly as possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I mean, I've lived in, in Italy a lot throughout my life. Like from the time I was young, my parents brought me over when I was a teenager. And then um, because I really got into travel as a young person, I, I was in that industry I just started coming to live here whenever I could, even if it was three months, six months. And I have done that in different periods of my life. So if I was to add up all together um, over the years, how much time I've spent in Italy, it would be, I think I added up that it would probably be about six or seven years of my life now that I've spent living here. Yeah. Um, myself, I guess it was more holidays. So probably about half a dozen, six or seven um, holidays coming to Italy so that was where my sort of love and fascination for all things Italian came came into my sort of thought process and uh, you know how I sort of felt about uh, Italy and, and the culture. Mm. Right and we're going to get into that a lot more uh, today but I'd like to know you know your lives in Australia just a little bit for some history you could tell me you know what what you did professionally, uh, maybe specifically what areas you're from and how you met. Okay, well, <laughs> three part question. <laughs> question. Um, well, I started off, as I said, basically, um, as a young person, I was working with the travel industry. And I even went off to work with Qantas for many years, the Australian airline and was an airline mm. host. I also worked in marketing and sales and for the same industry, like the same um, airline. Um, but then I kind of veered off track and did other things. And then I went to live in France for 10 years. And because I had um, a degree to teach English, I worked at a university in France. But simultaneously, I ran a five-star bed and breakfast in a really old home in an old village in France. Um, so I've had a fairly varied background and then when I went home from France back to Australia um, I'd been writing all my life but not professionally and that's when I launched into writing books and they were really really successful I won a literary award and started doing a lot of photojournalism and writing of books mostly biographies and got into sort of that sector as well so there's been, you know, the travel, the writing and all that. As I got older, that was more what I've worked upon to move forward with, really, as I've gone forward. 
um, I'll let yeah. David have a go. And then... <laughs> <laughs> so, so my, I guess my uh, my career was more more traditional. Um, mm -hmm. So I was mostly in IT for probably twenty five years or so. Um, very various roles in IT roles for different companies um, and then recently I've moved more into sort of finance side of things so um, that's my sort of I guess background on a um, career perspective and professional perspective yeah and so obviously we're a new couple and yeah. we've been together coming up to so it'll be four years next uh, February, February and <laughs> We met online, <laughs> as many people do these days. Yes, of course. It, it, it's <laughs> quite common. It's not like that strange <laughs> thing anymore. <laughs> no, not strange at all. In fact, hallelujah, because um, otherwise we yeah. would have never found each other, I don't Sweet. think. Oh. Yeah. We were different parts of Sydney. so Very it, different parts. So we It would have been a miracle for us to cross paths. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, we literally met and went on two dates and then went into lockdown. So our the beginning of our relationship was three months talking on the phone every day during lockdown, but we actually fell in love over the phone. Um, and I think it was wonderful. We've always said it propelled us forward probably by 12 months because mm. having to just talk, and we never faced time. It's funny, we just decided just to talk. And mm. we communicated so much. We learned more about each other in a really short amount of time that yeah. I think you would if you were dating someone traditionally and right. by the time the lockdown stopped that was it we just wanted to be together so it was pretty awesome actually I mean it was awful but good yeah <laughs> yeah awesome. yeah pretty yeah. good you were kind of forced to have the online relationship <laughs> yes yes oh. But yeah. still an amazing way. I love the part that you're talking about, you know, just just voice calls, voice communication. That's really nice because, you know, I think a lot of us, because mm -hmm. of all these other mediums, uh, you know, the, we don't train ourselves enough to become dedicated listeners. So that that's good. Yes. Yes, oh, I yeah. agree with you. Yeah, yeah, I think we really learned just so much about each other. And we used to say, we would have never learned this much if we'd gone on a date like once a weekend for 12 months. Yeah, um, nice. Instead, it was every evening, mm. you know, we would sit and talk for hours and talk about every single thing, every aspect mm. of our lives and we, where we'd come yeah, from. Yeah, everything. You know, yeah. Everything. That's amazing. That's really nice. And so mm. can you tell me when did it come up that you both have this love? for Italy? Well, basically from day one, because it was something that were, was on our profiles that would have attracted us initially anyway, I suppose, on the online space um, you like about travel. travel. Than, we both yeah. loved travel. We had put mm. both put that. And David immediately, when I told him that I was part Italian, he was really intrigued and told me how much he loved Italy and he was really sweet because he'd write me little text messages and translate them on Google Translate into Italian and I thought Aww. that was just romantic and really so sweet, sweet. appealed to that side of me I suppose um it was fairly early I suppose in our relationship that I told him I had a dream that I'd always had this dream to eventually have a home in Italy and I had worked on that dream yeah. for years but it had never come to fruition mm. and I say to him I think it was because something was but I wasn't with the right person to ever do mm. it and he straight away said to me that's a dream that I've always had in the back of my head but I knew it wasn't going to happen in my other life so to speak either yeah. so it was something that straight away just clicked with us and mm -hmm. even though at the time we had no idea where we were going forward together that we would end up here married today it was something that still created this lovely bind between us so it was yeah. you know it was really lovely because we and both it was, had... a, it was like a it wasn't specifically a goal for both of us mm -hmm. but it was it was something that we could you know it was something tangible that we both had an idea that would be great if it does happen. Um, yeah. You know, and then obviously it progressed and here we right. are. Right. Yes. And we're going to get to some of these steps, but I want to backtrack a bit because 
what I found particularly interesting, and I think our audience, any of you who are watching, is that it does come up about Italian citizenship um, from mm -hmm. usually ancestry, but your father is Italian. So I wanted to find out, you know, especially because I'm not familiar with Australia in any way, how could you say that you are defined as an Italian Australian? Like, what did that mean? You know, what kind of cultural dominance or influences is, 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 was in your house growing up? I'm already familiar with Italian Americans, right? And living in South Florida, we're familiar with Italian Argentinians, but I would love to know what is the Italian Australian experience? Um, it, look, it's probably similar, although I can't compare, obviously, but um, growing up, uh, for a start, when I was very little, like preschool age, mm -hmm. my parents um, had a florist shop. They were florists. And so they would leave me with my nonna and my three zias, my three aunties, my dad had right. three sisters. So to the age of about four until I started preschool kindergarten, I was with them. And they would speak to me in Italian and feed me, obviously, Italian things. And when my mum, who's English, would come home, um, she would talk to me in English. And sometimes I wouldn't understand because I'd been listening to the Italian. So moving forward, it was dad eventually realised that he wanted to speak more English at home for mum's sake. But I always had that influence. And I grew up the same, I suppose, that a lot of Italian families and mum being English, just loved. She embraced, she used to say, it was funny, she's always said her whole life, I think God made a mistake and I was born in England, but I wasn't meant to be. I feel more Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so she really loved the whole culture from the beginning. And I grew up around, you know, people making their own wine. My uncle would buy grapes because we didn't have vineyards in Sydney, but he would buy masses of grapes. We would have once a year all the family should get would get together in my mum and dad's garage and make their passata, the tomato sauce. Um right. from all the red tomatoes. And we've always had olive trees in the backyard in Sydney in our garden as a child. So mum and dad would pick the olives every year. So pretty much I did grow up very much with that combination of both being rather anglified and my mum sounds like pretty much like the queen that just passed away. You know, she's <laughs> English. Um, so right. I've got a, a little bit of that. But also I always felt so much of that mm -hmm. beautiful Italian culture come through from dad's side. So I always felt very attached to it from the time I was very little. Right. That's interesting. And then, of course, I believe uh, based on the first uh, interview that Christine had written with uh, about you is that you did get Italian citizenship from an early age. Yes, because mm. dad decided. Um, so I have one sister who's just six years older than I am. Mm -hmm. And before she sort of went off and lived her own life, dad really wanted us to come to Italy and understand that part of our culture and our background. And mum was very keen about that as well. So at 15, we came to live in Italy for a year. I took mm -hmm. an entire year off school. Um, mm. My mother father went to see my principal of my school and they said it's a fantastic idea. Marisa will learn so much. She'll move forward with languages and things. They were quite forward thinking in the way that, you know, the processes, which was great. So I didn't go to school for an entire year, but I came back pretty much fluent in Italian and French. <laughs> so that was fantastic. That's um, amazing. Yeah, it was it was just wonderful. Mm. Mm. So, David, how's your Italian going? Because I know I'm learning. <laughs> it's it's hard. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it, yeah, it's difficult. Um, I guess I'm in my infancy, so my my understanding is uh, a lot better than my speaking. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's what I want to try and push when I get back to Australia. I'm definitely going to try and push the the speaking side of um, my learning so because it's it it has been it's a struggle because obviously when I go back to Australia there's no Italian influences really right um, so it's all except for me except, <laughs> except for <Marissa. laughs> but um so so everybody speaks 
you know, most most people are speaking English unless you go to a specific Italian area in Sydney. Um, right. So it's so it's difficult to sort of um, uh, be immersed in the language, and that's that's where I guess you you learn the quickest, and and um, that's where your your ability to sort of communicate grows the fastest when you're actually immersed in it. So so going back to an English speaking country is is uh, obviously going to put make that a bit more difficult but uh, you know to get into classes and try and um, learn as quickly as possible essentially yeah that's great and I think that's great advice for any of you you know wanting to learn Italian or having to move because you are you, that was going to be my next question but you gave some great tips and usually that comes up the best experience is immersion where you're just kind of thrown in there and you have to do it and I'm sure, you know, the time that you've been in Italy and we're going to get to that next about buying your home and that uh, we've been, you know, told by other foreigners is that, you know, just dealing with day to day things helps a lot. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So if it's just small things, you know, obviously going into a shop and, you know, asking for, you know, fruit and vegetables, you know, learning, <laughs> learning the names of, of things and going, oh, OK, so that's the Italian name for that fruit, you know, so you've got to learn that name before you can ask for it. So those little things, you know, all sort of just adds adds up and, you know, immerses you and you slowly sort of remember those those words, you know, going forward. So, yeah, definitely. He's doing really well. And I, I push him a little bit because if we're somewhere and we're going to order something, I say, David, you go and do it. You know, I, mm. I don't want to uh, it's easy, easy for me so I want him to practice as much as possible and the yeah. other day we attended a beautiful just a couple of days ago a beautiful neighbor's wedding and of course mm. we were just surrounded we we're the only two Anglo people there it was just a big Italian wedding and it was yeah. wonderful nice. and I'm saying to him you know what do you say say to people you know and just encouraging him and mm. he's he's gaining more confidence every day which is great so I'm yeah, yeah I'm really proud of him he's trying really hard <laughs> Yes. The thing with learning a language, it's 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 all about just just giving it a go. Yes. Um, mm. So many times you think, oh, I'm not quite sure how to say that, so I won't say it. Whereas if you just go, I think it's this, and you just person who goes, ah, didn't she, they they sort of understand what you're trying to ask for, but they know you've said it wrong, so they can guide you. But that just that interaction just just gives you that a little bit more confidence yeah that's really good well I, I'm sure it'll be there before you know it and obviously never perfect but you know uh mm. you know here is the great opportunity so I want to get into the next part obviously anybody who is watching you know the uh, David and Marissa's channel um hot topic buying a home in Italy and and <laughs> you've done what a lot of people have said you shouldn't do, which is what? And how, how about you buy a buy, buy a property without seeing it. <laughs> yes. So there you go. How to buy a property without, without being seeing. there. And without, yeah. knowing, without knowing the village, without knowing the area, anything. I can yeah. see everybody taking notes. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's start from the beginning. Obviously, you were forced to because of COVID, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was an interesting process. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I I said to David, well, during COVID, unfortunately, I was um take put off work because the company I was working with, which was an Italian company, by the way, were kind of shutting down in Australia because of mm. financial things with what was going on globally. So I was off work for a long time, and I needed a project. I have a very busy mind, and I just thought. Mm. This is I'm going to get into my research again because I put off my research about houses. So I had all the time in the world to sit down. So that was it. And yeah. I just got online and I, being a writer as well, I'm really into finer details. So I would search something and I would go on Google Earth and I would hit the ground running with the thing where they drive through the villages and I right. would literally stop it if there was a shop I would look at the name of the shop. I'd Google the name of the shop, find out what it was. I literally did that with hundreds and hundreds of villages throughout different parts of Italy to find where I thought we'd be comfortable and happy. Mm. So I really did a lot of research during that time. 
which I think is great advice. And actually, I, I'm not looking to purchase a home yet <laughs> in Italy. Um, <laughs> but you have made, and we'll make sure we put a link below to that video because I never thought about that. Because to me, purchasing a home or property virtually just meant being dependent on the website, what they provide. But Google Earth is amazing. And Marissa shows you how to do that. And you can literally see your town. You can't necessarily see the inside. So fantastic advice. That, that, that's really great. So oh, yeah. what, yeah, why use can you? You can, yeah. yes. Hmm? Use Sorry. the tools that are available. So, yeah. Yes. In, in researching. And, and I think anybody, even if you're not purchasing a property, here's a great way to check out, you know, an Airbnb or what part you want to be in, what's around, you know, the street. Because like, uh, you know, when we stayed in Rome, I wanted to make sure that I was near Piazza del Popolo. And, and you know, I, I don't really know because it's been quite a few years, or at least I didn't think to use Google Earth, uh, but you can check out a neighborhood. So yeah, fantastic advice. So so why Keani? How did that come about? Either of you well, can answer, I guess. Yeah, it's um basically, uh, Keani was really by chance, in all honesty. Mm. I started off my research really in Umbria, so outside mm. of Tuscany, because I have family in Umbria, and I've been mm. there a lot since I was young. From the yeah. time I started coming to Italy at 15, one of my dearest aunties lived there, and I still have cousins there, and I love it, and it's quite similar to Tuscany, Yeah, but... Um, every time we actually found properties we liked, but there was always something wrong or one we, we tried to make an offer and we missed out. Mm. Different things were happening. And then I spoke to a cousin that lives there and he said, oh, I think you should look elsewhere. And honestly, by chance, I, we started to look in Tuscany because David loved Tuscany, but mm -hmm. I truly believed it was out of bounds for us financially because I for some reason, I think it's just after watching Under the Tuscan Sun and different things, right. you, yeah. you you only think of all these beautiful villas and things that mm -hmm. are going to cost like millions of euros and that was not us. Mm. But then as I started to research more and look at different areas, I realised that wasn't the fact. There was plenty of affordable homes everywhere, really, if you yeah. just looked in the right place. And basically we were looking at, for a place as I said we wanted to be in like in a beautiful village but with all the services not far from tra main transport hubs um very very natural we're both very into nature and mm -hmm. the more I just google different areas we found that what's called the Provincia di Pisa where we are so it's mm. basically oh. anything across and south of Pisa and they actually call it the golden triangle here um, that we're living in was a very natural beautiful area um, the more I researched again I found that the Chiani is not just a, a village in fact it's like an entire the name yeah. Chiani is a, an entire shire we would call it in Australia or England I'm not sure what you would call that in America county. but like a county, county. It, it's a small area that takes in lots of other villages we are in the yeah. actual head of that shire which is Chiani the village but the Shire is called Kiani as well. So when we looked at Kiani as a Shire, we found out that it was literally all organic mm. and that they were against GM products and that they had some of the most well-renowned food in all of Tuscany, mm. um, that the history went back to the Etruscan time, so it was a rich history. Yeah. And Kiani was actually owned by the Medici family of Florence that built right. basically built Florence um, back from around the 1400s mm -hmm. so it had this beautiful rich history it had wonderful nature it when you look from Kiani you literally are looking at those postcard gold and rolling hills with the villas on top in the distance so it was kind of the quintessential thing that you would dream of if you were looking at pictures of Tuscany mm -hmm. and yet we were in this little beautiful little community and could afford a lovely home right in the yeah. heart of the village where we just walk out our door and within under two minutes, we're everywhere by foot. Mm. So right. that's how we chose it. Yeah. And I'm guessing that you work with a realtor then. 
Absolutely. Um, yes. I found the house via one of the real estate um, sites that I was using. I, I found mm -hmm. three favourite sites that I particularly liked. Um, and one If you them, want, you can share with us sure. uh, which the sites are. Oh, okay. So um, I use immobiliare.it, which is actually right. an Italian site. It's the biggest this one it translates into English as well so it's easy for people to look at it they don't have mm -hmm. to read the mm -hmm. there's another one called Gateway that's an mm. English based one mm -hmm. and then the last one's another Italian one but is also translate in translates into English sorry and it's called Idealista right. that's the one I'm familiar with okay yeah. so often you'll see the the listings on all three in fact or at least mm -hmm. two out of the three they might have similar listings I found this house on both or maybe all three and but it was it was a bit confusing because this house had dropped in price at one stage so it was showing different pricings and things mm -hmm. it, but it looked you know really great to us exactly mm -hmm. kind of what we, we wanted wise, location wise, exactly yeah. yeah so that's how we went about it I got on the phone literally because I had heard a lot of the time that you um, email sometimes and don't get responses and I thought oh mm -hmm. well I'll try and ring and see if the person answers me which she did and she was awesome mm -hmm. and we just and it just progressed from there so and we've become best of friends in fact we're really yeah. good friends with her and her husband now right that's great and and I believe uh, we we started to talk before we started recording here is that you bought a property that was in fairly good condition, but it still needs some restoration and work. And and yeah. uh, so could you talk about that a bit? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, so I guess, um, yeah, the, the house itself had been, I guess, um, uh, a lot of the work had been done, like they had put, put on a new roof and they put a new central heating system in. Um, uh, and I, I think... Um, uh did they in the cantina yeah. in the cantina which is the ground floor yeah. which we we are mm. going to renovate but already they, they had to beams yes they had to yeah. replace the mm. the huge structural beams that were there so mm. they are all new um they basically yeah. done all new electricity and plumbing mm. um it's got a, it had a brand okay. new bath which was awesome yeah. and apart from that it was an empty shell so, but it was structurally mm. totally redone, which are mm. all the big cost factors usually when you buy a really old home. Right. So that was really fantastic for us because personally, I've done a lot of big projects before where you really had, the I, I've, yeah. I've started like with the the real ruin. I've done that in France in the past. Mm -hmm. And at in mm -hmm. our lives we kind of went oh we don't know if we want the massive project like you sometimes right. do we don't mind minor things we didn't mm -hmm. we're going to restructure some things in here that are not like what we want exactly and we're going to you know do the cantina and create something down there really lovely so we definitely have projects yeah. but at least we could walk into the house and feel like it was structurally sound and it had Mm. everything that it did have yeah. was in good condition right yeah. so um I think probably uh it, it's probably not easy to just narrow it down and I'm sure you if you don't already have a video you will have you know more videos that explain the buying process but Marisa I feel you have an advantage because of the language all right so mm. what if you were asked by anyone, either you know someone you know or somebody you get to know through through your channel, is what would be maybe the top five pieces of advice for somebody buying a property the way you have, either online or ideally in person. Um, now that I, like in if if it's in retrospect, absolutely now and seeing what people struggle with or what we perhaps did, though I, you're absolutely right. Having the language is a big plus, no. but mm -hmm. it that's, shouldn't that's, stop that's you. That's massive, but yeah. it doesn't. It shouldn't stop you. No, no. But okay. I think it's really sensible 
Um, for example, what I notice, and I and I, and I always sort of reach out to people if I can kind of thing, if I can help them. Um, I notice that a lot of people have this dream of coming to Italy to buy a house, but they actually have no clue where they want to be. Mm-hmm. And want Mm. other people to tell them um often people will say oh where should I look um to me that's an impossible question because as an individual we all have our own needs and wants so Mm -hmm. I always people really think about number one what is it when you move forward if you want to be in Italy number one are you a country person or a coastal person Mm -hmm. number one like really think about where you want to be physically with nature yeah. and then you have to then obviously keep a budget in mind just because that will also narrow things down for you and use all the tools like I was saying really do your research yourself mm-hmm. don't wait for someone else to tell you oh come here or come there look mm-hmm. at lots of YouTubes that's what I did look at where yeah. people are do all the research go yeah. on Google Earth look at all the real estate sites um once you've contacted someone if normally you can write to them always in english see if they answer you back in english if they do that Mm -hmm. means they're going to communicate with you Mm -hmm. if you are absolutely at a loss i would definitely say now that i've started to kind of help people i would definitely say reach out to someone that you can see is helping people find homes Mm. honestly which might have the language absolutely like if they're bilingual because you might spend a little tiny bit of money but the stress and the time the stress that you won't have the time that you will save Mm. honestly it counts for a lot and I I see that now that people that do work with someone or through someone that has the languages and can help them just go boom 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 through the processes it just makes everything so much easier Um, and I say to people if you have a first contact with someone who isn't Mm. kind to you or isn't answering you back let it go Mm. see if Mm -hmm. you can see with someone else but don't try and hit your head that's, against that's, every a, that's an important point because you'll find that most of the listings in italy are with multiple agencies yes they're not mm-hmm. they don't have a very few of them would be just with one real estate agent so they're going to okay. be with like probably four Lots. five six however many mm-hmm. uh you know agents so so it's it's slightly different in that way because I know in Australia most most people just sign up with one agent. It's like exclusive um, to one exclusive agency. To one agent. It's not here most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll right. you'll find half a dozen agents have the same house. Yes, and and it, this has come up before, but if you haven't already read or know of this, is that the agent in Italy represents both the buyer and the seller. Correct. That's right. They can do. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So it's um, and I think you know another important thing is is that people really looking to make sure they know the steps. Like talk yeah. to someone and find the steps of what you're doing, and don't be led. Um, it's very easy to get into a Facebook group, for example, and some of them are mm. awesome and they have wonderful information, and then others I think I read. Confused. This would make me more confused than anything else. Mm. So I think it's really important to find someone that you know you can see the information is correct, but double check. You know, do your own due diligence. I think it's right. really yeah. important that you don't go into things naively without checking things thoroughly as well. Mm-hmm. But going going back to I guess location, you know, it's it's the real estate. Um, motto of location 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 but it's not from a real estate perspective as in you know you find this property that's going to sell at a high price because what you're really saying when you say location 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 when you're perhaps buying a, a property in Italy is is what your sort of dream is what your lifestyle is so it's mm-hmm. more about the location of that's going to fulfill that dream or lifestyle rather than you're buying a property to invest and sell yes um so it's right. a different way of looking at location 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 so but mm-hmm. having that understanding of what what you're looking for you know whether you want a beach house or 
you know, close to the beach or whether you're on a country villa or whether you want to be in a city or whether you're having that down and um, sort of understanding before you start looking is going to help narrow down the search. Mm, right. Even things, Lisa, like, for example, a lot of people say to me, oh, I'd love to live in Italy, but I don't want to have a car and it's difficult mm. to get a license. Mm. So, again, um, it's no good in that case going and looking at some villa lost in the middle of nowhere if you don't right. want to drive. You know, yeah. so, again, you have to think, well, in that case, I really need to be somewhere and I need to check that there are good transport links mm -hmm. to where right. service that then links us to other towns that have great train services yeah so it's fine to be in the country but you mm. want to make sure and that was another thing that i double checked before we came because mm. when david's not here oftentimes i'm here without a car but i can jump on buses and trains quite easily so again it's oh, really good. important yeah, yeah. Yeah, excellent advice. Uh, definitely. Like you said, you have to do your due diligence. You wouldn't buy even a property totally blind in your own country, never mind in a foreign one. Um, yes. You know, even things like the, the, the process, you know, we've talked about, and I don't need to talk about it today, but you know, there's a bureaucratic process in Italy that, you know, we have to resign, you know, just take a step back because, you know, we can't have our Disney Australian or New York state of mind coming into Italy and expect things to happen <laughs> yeah. you know patience yes. is the uh yeah, is the key. yes definitely key yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely it's yeah. very so funny I, I remember in one of the videos I did do actually about buying a house and I said patience is king mm. I actually use the word king because I said if you're not patient king, king. You won't do this yeah. because you actually have to really take a step back like we said and think, no, I'm not buying in a street down the road from where I live. I'm going through a totally different cultural thing, a totally different set of laws. And it's no good getting frustrated mm -hmm. or upset. You just work through mm. the processes. You just take mm. a deep breath and you just work your way through yeah. and you get there. But you do need to have patience and just know that mm. it's a different thing to maybe what you're used to. That's all. Right. And I, I think this is great because you are living proof now that to anybody thinking about it, that you can get there. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, can, you can get through the process and um, yeah. it, it just, it happens once, mm -hmm. once you get on that train and you've said, right, <laughs> we're going to buy this house and you put down your deposit, um, you know, patience, but the process will will finish and it really does yeah, yeah. yeah. right mm -hmm. very good thanks for sharing that advice i want to get to a very happy subject though oh i think it's been a week right has it been a week <laughs> two weeks <laughs> two weeks yeah, well yeah. i'm sure there are many people wanting to get married in italy but we'd love to know your experience and i'm hoping you're going to be sharing some photos and things for us yeah, to see yeah. and sure. of course you know you can check them out their youtube and their instagram and social media out that you'll be putting that up shortly but tell yeah. us how, mm -hmm. from the time the idea came about until the end <laughs> okay well, well the time <laughs> the, the initial thing was obviously obviously um you know we we were getting on very very well <laughs> And that that led to to my thought process of uh, going, oh, this is the the lady I would like to marry, um, mm -hmm. and and therefore you know I've got to ask her to get engaged. So then I was thinking, okay, so where would be the place that I would to my mind first? But then there's one place in Italy which I is. It's always been my favorite city in the world, and that's Venice. Oh, so, is yes. that where you got married? Not was married, you... engaged. engaged. Oh, so, okay, so, beautiful. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's definitely Venice was the place, and then it was we last year we came over, um, and that was when I asked her to marry me yeah, in Venice. On a so. gondolier in Venice, which was very <laughs> Oh, <romantic>. no. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like... It was just once again. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. beautiful. 
Um, but then we decided that we just loved where we bought our home here so much mm. that we wanted to be married here. And in all honesty, uh, Lisa, it was meant to be a larger wedding than what it was. But yes. unfortunately, we've had some things happen in our families, both of us, over the last few months mm. that changed our plans. Um, and we then, you know, mm. spoke to family members and said, look, we might just do something incredibly intimate just with witnesses because um, family members are unwell, David's mm -hmm. mum passed away, different things have happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we still wanted to make it really special though because it's still yeah. really special and everyone said you must, you must, even if you're doing something tiny. So I started looking at different things of what we could do close by and it was totally by chance Um I saw that there was this beautiful villa, um, a very, very special villa where a princess lived up until the 1930s. And mm -hmm. then when she passed away, the villa was abandoned. But a Welsh man and a French man who were both incredible wine, and one of them was an amazing winemaker, had mm -hmm. taken over the villa and its vineyards and had spent mm -hmm. years yeah. restoring it. And it was stunning. And it's just about 10 kilometres from here. Mm -hmm. And they were doing wine tastings. They weren't doing yeah. weddings. But I emailed them from Australia while I was back in Australia and said, would you consider doing us a favour and letting us getting married, uh, let us getting married in your beautiful gardens and um, maybe do a little wine tasting or something? I don't know, something just intimate with a few people because we want just a very small ceremony. And they came back and said, look, actually, we've never done a wedding, but you would be a great way of us having a trial mm -hmm. so we said okay so we went ahead and honestly it was a fairy tale because oh, they wanted it to be as big and as special as it would have been if it had been hundreds of people and they were just eight of us but wow. gave us the entire use of the entire villa and its grounds and the vineyards and the gardens and we literally moved from a part of, we were married in front of a fountain in the garden then we moved to another spot to have a glass of champagne then we moved to another spot to have a aperitivo or then we moved to another beautiful room above the the cellars for dinner and mm. it was amazing absolutely amazing yeah, and yes. just and like anything with friends yeah, yeah, yeah very very beautiful and very very special and i highly recommend it <laughs> to anybody very special and very affordable because i think a lot right. of people um, think things like that that you have to be you know in, have a huge budget and of course yes if it was a, a wedding with a thousand people you would mm. um but again it, it, it's amazing what you can do on you know without mm having massive budgets and things if you mm -hmm. again do search like I did or perhaps yeah. reach out to people you know it's do what I did and just say look would you consider doing something for us so they did um so what what wonderful people and they said oh there was lots of fun you know they loved watching it and right. going through this with us yeah that's so nice how it worked out that's it was really wonderful. beautiful what Thank a you. nice, what a nice um, beginning of this part of your lives together. Uh, that's yeah. very special. Thank you. So Thank you. Let's talk next about Tales of Tuscany, because I believe when Christine interviewed you the first time, I'm not sure if you had started the channel. Did it come after the fact? Uh, so I think I had, but we were still just in Australia going through the processes and I was kind of talking to yeah. people about what we were physically going through um, mm -hmm. and, you know, how we were buying this house from afar. And, um, again, it was something I started, once again, I think, because the process of buying the house and also the process of me being at home and mm -hmm. not having work at that point in time, mm -hmm. and, um, again, being a very creative person, you know, you know, used to writing and doing different things, and I thought this is a wonderful outlet right something that might be helpful to others but I had no idea you know if if 10 people well, would watch me you know like right I, I was actually a no an absolute novice to YouTube in all honesty uh -huh. I had no idea that people you know had millions of followers or anything like that at all I literally right. started as a novice um and just hoped that it might 
one day be, you know, something that would be helpful to other people, which it, it has mm-hmm. really started to be. Mm-hmm. But it was more so an outlet for myself in many ways. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's nice. great. Awesome I view. think as a magazine, we have a very similar, but we'll talk about that after the interview. <laughs> but yes, uh, you know, I think the most beautiful, but I will say this, some of the most beautiful things are just built out of, Passion, like I call Live in Italy magazine, the pandemic passion project. And yeah. and it's so much more satisfying and rewarding, I'm sure you could say, is if success, however you want to measure that, comes by accident. <laughs> you know, because you didn't go into it thinking, I need to start a YouTube channel. I need it to monetize. This is my passive income. You know, uh, it seems like I want to do this. I want to share this. You know, it's a it's a creative outlet for me. And oops, <laughs> it happened to do really well. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that's yeah. right. It's um, it's a funny thing. Look, yes. in all honesty, you just word that use the word monetize. I didn't even know that any of that part. And I and when I found out, I said to David, "Oh well, this probably won't ever happen to." It. I honestly didn't realize or think that mm-hmm. it would ever happen. Right. I just um, want to bring it exactly like you said, just from passion and for fun and, you know, to keep my creative juices Jesus. flowing, as they <laughs> say, you know, and have fun with it and share what we were doing and and that people started writing beautiful comments and saying how much they enjoyed right. our journey and seeing us do these things together was just the cherry on top of the cake. Amazing, you know? yes. And that the sense of community that we can build, you know, authentically like you just did a video that somebody you had met online and then you end up having pizza together you know in person it was just like but yes. I'll let you go and explore that channel but I will give a little bit of plug there and I'll point my finger out because that's where the little subscribe button it is so important that you must subscribe to our channels that you like and comment if you are not familiar with the YouTube landscape you have to know that even if you press that thumb up or you add a little comment, all of a sudden YouTube says, I like you. And the thing is, at the end of the day, it's just like writing a book and, you know, you're a creative. We want to be read. So in the case of YouTube, we want to be seen. We want to grow. And it helps share our story with other people. Uh, unfortunately, that's the, just the way it works or fortunately, unfortunately. Uh, so please do. We'll be sure to put all the links below and obviously the subscribe button throughout. So just remember to do that uh, so you can subscribe to their channel because that that's all it takes. It doesn't cost anything. You know, we're just supporting each other yeah, through yeah. sharing. Okay, so enough with yeah. that commercial interview. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the goals of the channel. Where do you hope to go with this? Because you know yourself now that life has kind of resumed, how time consuming it can be. What are your goals, let's say, for the channel? Um, well, now I suppose that um, I can really see, in fact, that apart from people just enjoying, you know, us showing our processes that we've been through and our everyday life, a lot of people just say they just love to see, like, live vicariously via us and, you know, like you do, like I used to do watching other people, just see what everyday life is like. <laughs> but also I think mm. that as a goal now, I want to share more like you would have seen, I think Lisa, you were saying, I've started to do some home tours as well um, because I've been asked to, in all honesty, I didn't go out and seek that. And I really want Mm -hmm. people to understand that it's been through me doing YouTube that I've actually had individuals say, my house isn't on sale. I'd really love you to come and do a little video for me. Um, if you'd like to, because it's something you can put on your YouTube, but also you'd help me. And honestly, I've just done it out of love, literally. And also mm-hmm. because yeah. I thought, what a great thing. Um, I'm helping them. It is it is obviously all becoming popular. Um, it gets David and I out to places we would never see. Yeah. Yeah. I love this sticky big in these beautiful homes. I mean, I must admit, <laughs> it's so much fun. Yeah. I've always looking at beautiful Mm. homes so we've just done another little trip just two days ago to another man Mm. who asked us to go to his beautiful home near um Monte Pulciano and I said to David come on another road trip (laughs) we went and saw some friends um did a lovely film around his place which I will show so 
the goals are, I'd say, is to continue sharing our own personal journey, but so also we blend just blending mix. it with that as well. Um, but also all ways to continue enjoying it because I would never want it to be something that I feel is, you know, a bugbear. Like I don't want it to be something that I don't enjoy anymore. So right. it wasn't that as I do these things that I always feel like I have time for, for David, for our lives, also for the creative side. Um, I've started yeah. writing another book <laughs> about our lives in Italy. Nice. Um, because I haven't for a while and I really wanted to get back to writing so I suppose it's kind of intertwined with all those things but mm -hmm. I'm really loving it I I actually have I really enjoy going around and filming and, and sharing and seeing that a lot of people I know may, might have a dream that they might not ever be able to fulfill so right. they to watch other people because they in their you know in their heart of hearts they might know that they might not ever make it there but they love to see other people doing that so it's it's a lovely thing I think to share anyway and I've always been a sharer so I I really enjoy that part of the process yeah that's really great I love that that's good Thank well you. I wish you continued success on that uh, so we're going to wrap up the interview like I do every time and I do say this every single time is that the chat with an expat Rhyme, <laughs> but <laughs> expat can mean different things. And we, I always ask, what is your definition of an expat? And if you're totally not comfortable with that word, you could call your something else, uh, yourself something else. So, definition of an expat, David, you go first. Definition of an expat. Um, I guess mine would be. Um, there's there's two levels. So I would say there's the first level would be just someone who's from another country who's living um let's say in italy uh they might be there for for work or um most it's mostly from a work perspective normally expats so they they've been sent there through their work uh, and they're living there for two or three years as as an expat um and then they might return to their home country uh the other way i look at an expat is is someone who's from my point of view, is is someone who's actually wanted to move to another country and and emigrate mm -hmm. to that country. Um, so initially, I guess they're they're treated as as a I guess a foreigner um, mm -hmm. in that country. You know, you're learning the language, you're learning about the culture. Um, you're you know, I guess. Um, becoming part of a you know a community there, so that and that takes time. You know, some some places you know it depends how immersive you are. You know, mm -hmm. so that in in becoming you know uh, not so much an expat as a more of a local. So, right. So it's good for you. Um, so I look at it, those two. The one would be you know someone who's working in a in a country that's not potentially going to stay there long, long term. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the emigration the side. side. Yeah. I'm the other one. <laughs> You're the other one. That's right. Yeah. Right. So that's me. Good. Marissa. Uh, I suppose from my point of view, it's a little bit different. I would see, see myself as like a, a citizen of the planet basically, but, um, I don't feel I've never felt like I'm coming here as an expat. So mine's a really different situation. And I feel very fortunate and blessed to feel that way because to me, Italy's always been my home. Um, mm -hmm. From when I came here as a, an adolescent, I never, ever from that day forward felt like I was at home in Australia or in home. It was both. Wherever I am, it's my home. They're both my homes. I'm born there and I love Australia, but my roots and my blood and my heart and, you know, my passion, a lot of it, I think, more so comes from here. So it's such a major part of me that when I, every time the plane touches down when I come to Italy, I just go, oh, I'm home. Yeah. I feel that okay. same relief mm -hmm. of being back where I belong. It's an incredible feeling. 
and I feel wrenched when I leave in all honesty wow. so yeah, yeah very much so so I know one day I feel in my heart of hearts that we will be here for sure for you know forever kind of thing and this will be yeah. I'll become our, our forever home here dad <laughs> would would really love that because that's always been my dream to also he wanted to come back to Italy and he never got here to live so I'm fulfilling that dream of mm-hmm. his um as well as my own that's nice that's really beautiful so might make the next question a little bit more challenging for Marissa uh, oh, for you Marissa maybe not so much for David but I always ask besides friends and family uh, what mm-hmm. do you miss and I guess it could be both ways. So let's talk about what do you miss about Australia when you find yourself a longer period or one day could be, you know, what do you think you might miss if you move permanently from Australia? Um, look, I'm just going to be like really blatantly on, on, honest here. And in all honesty, not a lot. Okay, good. I like it's, honesty. <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful country, don't get me wrong, and I was born there. But I honestly and truly have always felt so European from the time I was a little girl that in many ways I do feel more at home in Europe, mm-hmm. um, in mm-hmm. Italy in particular. But as I mentioned, I think earlier, I lived 10 years in France. I felt very at home in there, there as well because it's still Europe. Um, and I honestly did miss my mum and dad and I dis- did miss my family and I did miss my good friends. And nowadays, gratefully, we do this, you see, we can mm. we can FaceTime, we can have more contact so easily that it makes that whole thing of missing to be. That's true. When I lived in France, uh, there was no such thing as the internet. I lived there during the 90s and the internet came in just as I was leaving. So I used to sit down and write very, very long letters. It was the Mm. good old fashioned contact (laughs) or a telephone call occasionally that cost a fortune because those days were expensive. Mm -hmm. So um, really, I don't miss a lot. I When I leave Italy, though, to go back to Australia, it's the opposite. I miss right. it. We miss everything. <laughs> right. You know, it, it's, a, I, I mean, it's, you know, that's why we're here. That's why this move has been made and that we're working yeah. towards this because in my soul, if you feel you belong somewhere, you know, you know, you just know. And we get here and it was like we didn't know this house and we didn't know this town. And yet the first time we put the key in the door downstairs, we both just went, this is where we're meant to be. And it just Amazing. gave us good times and it, yeah. it really does feel home. So um, I do miss Italy more when I'm away from it than what I miss the other way around. <laughs> For sure. Okay, good. I, I think I think I figured that out before even asking it. But what about you, David? You might have a different perspective. Uh, I've got a different perspective for sure. Um, so for me, it's it's two, it's two levels. So, so also because I was born in England and, and grew up there. So mm-hmm. there's parts of England that I still miss, although I haven't yeah. lived there for, you know, 30 years. Um, so, and this, and I guess, I guess it's more the, the cultural side, you know, with, with England, you go down to an old, you know, pub, uh, you know. Right drink with friends and family, um, you know, and it's it's an old, uh, you know, 16th century building, you know, big oak beams and all, all the rest of it. And and you don't get that, um, you know, any anywhere else really. Um, even across Europe, there's obviously very old buildings and things, but they're, they're not so, um, the hub of the village in England was the, uh, the old pub. So, right. so in, it's a colder climate, you know, you, mm-hmm. you go inside, <clears throat> whereas you come to Italy, you know, it's a warmer climate. So most people would sit outside, you know, and mm-hmm. cafes and, and see, you know, the, watch, watch people go by while you're, while you're drinking your, your cappuccino or uh, whatever drink. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
so so there's 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 things there in the UK that you know I, I, I still miss and I go oh when I go back to an old pub you know I said oh this, this is you know this is really nice um yeah. then on the other side of the coin you know Australia is a very new country you know it's a 200 years old um so there's not so much sort of I guess history in in the buildings and everything but it's more the natural side of Australia um nice. that um, you know, because there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of kilometers of, you know, lovely beaches everywhere, you know, up and down the coast, you can go anywhere. Um, and then you get the diversity, you know, you can go down much further south where there's you know snow on the mountains so you get all that diversity of nature and stuff so i would say that that's what i would probably miss you know from an australian perspective mm -hmm. um you know and that sort of i guess that that lifestyle um would be slightly different from in in italy you know although although you've got the beaches and you've got the the um uh you know the life is is just totally different so there's 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 those combinations of because i've lived in two different countries yeah. and now this is the third country so. <laughs> yeah no that's nice and thanks for sharing that because really yeah. at the end of the day we're an accumulation of all our experiences but it doesn't mean Absolutely. just because yeah. we move on to the next one that you know there aren't things that yes. we miss or wish for or things like that but you know nothing is is perfect but you know but mm -hmm. that that being said you know we're excited to watch this part of your journey together and of course you know uh Marissa and David are documenting that so it's just so, so much easier to keep up with you so that's good I mean that's one of be one of the most beautiful things the social media is uh keep building that community and uh, having connections right yes so let us know as 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 now that we are closing this interview is how do we reach you how to find you and we'll make sure that we put those links below oh thank you so much so yes. obviously you. as you've mentioned we have tales from tuscany on youtube mm -hmm. and um i have um instagram where i put but everyone's welcome to join it's not a private mm. one it's just my name marisa raul which by the way everyone i'm actually now changing my name slowly but surely back to my italian name um mm. because, yeah so um here in italy i'm marisa barilaro actually because in okay. italy you need to take on you always keep your maiden name and that's uh -huh. what's on my in passport so but I'm doing it in a, in a softly softly approach so people understand who I am still um so Marisa Raul is my Instagram which we post like our photos together and what we're doing and there's wedding photos and I, I actually haven't done too many yet I was waiting until just a couple of weeks after and um I have a few different Instagrams actually because I also have a really big one about Sardinia because I used to go there and I was like an ambassador for that um and I think they're that's probably awesome. I've yeah, got a few but that's it. probably the two most important yeah. things that where people could join me and and enjoy what we're doing really I think that's yeah. the most important part yes that's excellent and we'll make sure both in the article you'll be able to see the article which is more like a transcript because um it's our second largest audience and thank you uh is is um from italy it's usually italy and the uk they battle it out for second place so one month i'll see it's italy and then the other month i'll see it's uk wow. and then we do have the australian so anywhere that you're following us or wherever you're following, us, following us the channel you know we're very grateful to you um so so uh, let's continue to build this community that loves Italy right I actually funnily enough just before we jumped onto this I just recorded a little short of David and I saying we're just about to be with Lisa Morales on, <laughs> on the beautiful <laughs> show and I was going to post it straight on YouTube and then it came up so I'll do it right now <laughs> okay <laughs> great <laughs> so, yeah make sure if we put it on social media make sure you tag it so we could share it absolutely, absolutely. yes we love cross-pollinating as I call it 
So thank you for your time in this obviously very busy and exciting time for you. Please stay in touch. And I always say, you know, I have so many places when we we get up back over to Italy, as if, you know, with pro professional obligations and everything like this and life and COVID and everything is going to take a bit. And I'm going to have to figure out what we're going to first, but I hope <laughs> it will be somewhere in Tuscany too. <laughs> And we'll have well, to we, we'll be, visit. we would absolutely be honoured if you came and visited. That's for sure. We won't. We want to meet yeah. you in person. Yes. And once again, we are Living Italy Magazine. The website is www.livingitalymag.com, and you can find us easily on any your social media platform of choice. Choice Living Italy Mag, and we hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much, Lisa. Bye. Ciao everyone. Ciao. 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 Bye. Ciao.